and making a statement to set the record straight about what happened at the general conference, what it means for our denomination, the worldwide United Methodist Church, and how the United Methodist Church in Liberia will be operated going forward. You have heard a lot of messages being shared on social and secular media about human sexuality in the United Methodist Church. Some of those messages are misleading and very derogatory. As a matter of fact, there was a group of young people who came out to flock us carrying some of these demeaning messages. However, instead of speaking about all these misleading pieces of information being filtered in the air by the law of the United Methodist Church, I will focus on three decisions of the General Conference about which there is much discussion and misinformation. Human sexuality, disaffiliation, and regionalization. What happened at the General Conference? The General Conference voted to remove language in the United Methodist Book of Discipline, prohibiting marriage and ordination of self-empowered practicing homosexuals in the United Methodist Church, effective upon the close of the General Conference on May 3rd, 2024. Second, the General Conference voted to remove paragraph 2553, which has to do with disaffiliation. The paragraph created in 2019 after the Special General Conference to allow churches in the United States to leave the United Methodist Church. And thirdly, the General Conference approved a plan of regionalization for the United Methodist Church, which will take effect upon ratification by the annual conferences of the United Methodist Church. These three decisions of the General Conference have caused a lot of confusion and misleading messages about what will happen in our church. Let me clarify what these decisions mean and how they may affect the United Methodist Church in Liberia. What this decision mean for the United Methodist Church in Liberia? First, let me address the decision removing prohibitive language against marriage and ordination of self-empowered practicing homosexuals in the United Methodist Church. In 1968, the Methodist Episcopal Church merged with the Evangelical United Brethren Church to form the United Methodist Church in Dallas, Texas, the United States of America. Four years later, at the first United Methodist General Conference, a proposal to prohibit homosexual marriage and ordination was approved and placed in the Book of Discipline. Over the years since 1972 General Conference, United Methodists have debated this restriction with increasing intensity. At the same time, our churches in Africa have held to the conviction that we do not support homosexual marriage and ordination. In 2016, the General Conference authorized and the Council of Bishops appointed a commission on the way forward with mandate to bring a plan to a special General Conference in 2019 to determine how our worldwide United Methodist Church should move forward and focus on the primary mission of the church, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The commission recommended the one church plan which would have allowed traditionalists and progressives to live together in one church where churches would remove the restrictions while allowing regional flexibility on our differences on homosexual marriage and ordination. That plan did not get approved. Instead, the General Conference decided to maintain its position prohibiting marriage and ordination of self about practicing homosexuals. That decision created more tension and infighting among United Methodists, especially in the United States. With the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the 2020 General Conference was postponed and did not meet until 2024 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Prior to the 2024 General Conference, traditionalists United Methodists, primarily in the United States, created a global Methodist church 
and began to campaign against the United Methodist Church. That campaign was extended to Africa with the goal of recruiting United Methodist Churches in Africa to join the Global Methodist Church. They did not have votes in the 2024 United Methodist General Conference. So, the 2024 General Conference met and made its decisions. The removal of restrictions on marriage and ordination for self-empowered practicing homosexuals means that those conferences that wish to marry men or ordain self-empowered practicing homosexuals can do so. It also means that those of us in Africa, and especially for us in Liberia, are free not to allow such marriages and or ordination for self-empowered practicing homosexuals. In fact, the 24, 23, 24 General Conference also approved to allow every pastor of the United Methodist Church to be free not to perform homosexual marriages if the pastor so chooses. Secondly, the General Conference voted to remove paragraph 2553, which was inserted in the 2016 Book of Discipline following the conclusion of the 2019 Special, uh, special General Conference. This paragraph was created to allow local churches and annual conferences to leave the denomination under the assumption that general conference would have been held in 2020. This paragraph was limited to the churches in the United States, excluding the central conference, that means conferences outside the United States. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic struck the whole world, and the 2020 general conference was postponed twice until it was finally held in 2024 in Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. A petition to bring this affiliation on the floor was sponsored by some of our delegates from the Liberian Episcopal area. Unfortunately, it was defeated on the floor. Hence, the paragraph on this disaffiliation was closed. Therefore, it means that the door is closed for those United Methodist and our conferences who want to lead the United Methodist Church. Thirdly, let me address the approval of regionalization. Regionalization seeks to amend the structure of the church. The structure of the church has been deeply American-centric. Regionalization is empowering churches and our conferences across the world to make ministry and missional decisions appropriate for their context in order to be more relevant and effective. Since the contextual realities of Africa are different from those of America, Europe, and Asia, African conferences will decide what is needed to advance the disciple-making mission of the United Methodist Church in Africa. This means that Liberia will not tell those in America, Europe, or Asia how to do their work in those countries. According to some rates of regionalization set by Lena B. Tate, Special Assistant to the Executive Secretary of the Council of Missions, worldwide regionalization, quote, worldwide regionalization will change the name of each current central conference into regional conferences. It will transform the general conference. Its agenda will no longer be dominated by United States topics. The church in the United States will have their own regional conference, which they will deal with these matters. For too long, the more powerful parts of the church have imposed their will upon the less powerful. Regionalization will enable the United Methodist Church in Nigeria to focus on its mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and not to be distracted by debates over who wants to who wants to marry who. Furthermore, regionalization is a vehicle that will enable the United Methodist Church in Liberia to make and enforce relevant policies to guide and direct our missional priorities going forward. Regionalization because it amends the church's constitution must be ratified by the annual conferences before going into effect. The modality for the ratification of regionalization will be put into place in the next six months for, the, for further conversations, consultations, and awareness to our elaborate Episcopal Union. Once the plan is ratified across all the other conferences around the world, the Council of Bishops will announce the results and the plan will go into effect. How will the UNC in Liberia be operated? Whether regionalization is ratified or not, the Liberia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church will not conduct any weddings 
or ordinations of self-empowered practicing homosexuals. The Liberia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church is traditional in its interpretation of Holy Scripture and will continue its evangelistic outreach to all persons who live in darkness and do not know the redemptive grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will continue to extend scriptural holiness to all persons by the amazing grace of God. The United Methodist Church in Liberia will continue to abide by the beckoning songs of our Lord Jesus Christ when he says, quote, Come unto me, all who live on in our heaven living, and I will give you rest. Unquote. Our mission is to, quote, make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to obey all that God has commanded us. End of quote. I have met with my cabinet this morning, and we have pondered these decisions, and will continue to discuss them adequately so as to enable us to see the same to our various districts and sites. We will roll out a plan of regionalization in the days, weeks, and months leading to our warrant and the second annual session in February in Ghana City, Gomba District in 2024. We will also have conversations with the executive committee, the Liberia Episcopal area, to share with them the decision of the 2024 General Conference as I have shared with you today. We strongly caution all clergy members as well as lay persons of the Liberia Annual Conference, the United Methodist Church, to refrain from undermining the ministry of the United Methodist Church. Undermining the ministry of the church or the ministry of other clergy is a chargeable offense that will be enforced for the sake of maintaining the order of the church. To all United Methodists in Liberia and our Liberian company, the United Methodist Church is not a gay church. Repeat, the United Methodist Church is not a gay church. It is a strong church of God and ministering to sinners who are in need of the saving knowledge and grace of God. It is a worldwide denomination that is making a significant impact on our world. Yes, there are differences of opinion and conviction across our denomination, but the mission remains the same because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16, RSD. Be a United Methodist. Love the United Methodist Church and stay a United Methodist. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you very much. On behalf of the Bishop of the Liberia Episcopal Area and the Cabinet, including the Executive Committee, members from the Central Office, including the Department of Communication, I want to say thank you very so much for coming and your patience. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. However, copies will be distributed to you when we go to the office. And those of you who want to serve copy, you'll leave your email with me, and that will also be